Each year we welcome thousands of nonprofits to the Nonprofit Technology Conference. This year, the 12 NTC will be held in San Francisco on April 3rd through the 5th. Learn more at n10.org forward slash NTC. Hey everybody, I'm uh, David J. Neff at Dave I Am on Twitter, and we are here at NTC uh, saying hello to you guys in the online audience. And I have some great folks behind me that are going to introduce themselves, and today we're going to talk a little bit about innovation, how nonprofits can innovate, uh, define that, what it means. Um, I wrote a book called The Future of Nonprofits Thrive and Innovate in the Digital Age. It's the future of nonprofits.com if you guys want to check it out. Um, and so that's why I'm kind of leading this today, and I will let the uh, folks introduce themselves. So go ahead. Thank you. My name is Dan Michelle. I'm the digital marketing manager with Feeding America. Hi, I'm Drew Beam. I'm the director of innovation for Free Range Studios. And hi, I'm Melissa Roberts. I'm director of business development at Free Range. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, and so. Dan, we were talking about Feeding America and, uh, you know, talking about hunger and, of course, uh, we stumbled onto talking about the Hunger Games because who's not talking about the Hunger Games? Um, and you guys are actually doing something with the Hunger Games, which I thought he was lying to us, um, but he's not. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? And I think you also had a, a statement you wanted to make about the Hunger Games. Right. So, uh, so we have a partnership uh, through the World Food Program and the Hunger Games movie, and I think it's... Uh, Utilizing a movie of this caliber that's not really about, you know, poor people or poverty or our issue, it's kind of taking that hunger theme. So if you go to hungergames.wfp.org, there's a whole, you, people can take a quiz and then a portion of the proceeds go back to uh, the two organizations. You can donate, you'll see a PSA from the stars of the movie. And it's kind of taking that idea of, you know, going outside of where you, you know, your, your typical partnerships and trying to think of like how do you, utilize something like the Hunger Games and turn that around into this. And this is like a Hunger Games here. So uh, Dave is going to be our boy tribute. And then Holly Ross is our girl tribute. May the odds be in your favor. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and so how is that different? Like, I mean, have you ever partnered up with a major motion picture studio before? Is that something innovative or is that more of marketing and marketing can't be innovative? Like, explain that a little bit. Sure. I think that uh, we've, we've partnered with a movie before, but it was uh, with before it was with Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, so there was an obvious food tie-in. The Hunger Games being this post-apocalyptic kind of world and not necessarily about the issue of hunger. It's kind of taking just that name of the hunger and utilizing, utilizing that to get our, our awareness out. And I don't think it's, you know, marketing can't be innovative, but, you know, marketing sometimes can get into a rut and just kind of reaching out to different donors and different de people that you can find. Yeah, for sure. And NTC here, although you guys can't experience this at home, is very dystopian this year. It's very dystopian. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit. Um, tell me what Free Range does, and I'll just start off. Sure. We are a uh, design and communications agency. We work with nonprofits uh, and socially responsible businesses to help them tell their story uh, to make a difference. Um, and so tell me, um, and Tell us your job title if you didn't, and I don't remember it. Um, so tell me a little bit about how define innovation. Um, well, I think uh, the funny thing about innovation, well, let me start off. I, I'm the director of innovation for Free Range. Um, and the funny thing about innovation is that it's the fastest growing field and is probably the most poorly defined. And I think a lot of people have this kind of conception that if I need innovation, that means I need a hoverboard, I need, some, I need a thing. And uh, I'm basically here to say, no, I, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't have to be a thing. It has to be a way. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to, for one, is basically define the desire of your audience and create something that, a compelling story to create an end for them, to empower them, and then ultimately, create a new behavior. That's how I really kind of define innovation is like change the way you think and then ultimately change the behavior. And I kind of break it down into three parts. I have the, the oh wow, which is the sex appeal. Like you need to create something that's going to dazzle them and be like, oh my God, this is beautiful. And then you get the aha, which is that like, this is how it fits into my life. This is, this is how I'm going to use it. I can totally see myself in this thing. This is how I'm going to work with it. And then you, you inject your compelling story that, um, you know, this is your story, this is a story that they can also tell, and then you get something called Hey You. So there's the oh wow, aha, and the hey you. And the hey you is the evangelist. This is when they start to go, you know, hey Melissa, 
you got to try this thing out. I've been, I've been working with it for five years, and it's amazing, or five minutes, whatever it is. And that's ultimately what you're trying to achieve. Forget about like trying to make you know a robot or a hoverboard. You know, like think about it. It can come in its most simplest ways. Stories in themselves can be truly innovative, and ultimately that's what you're trying to do is change the behavior. I think. So, Melissa, tell me um, maybe about like how much do you push? your clients as an agency because I know nonprofits I've been on the agency side before and nonprofits can sometimes be a little averse to change and risk and a little worried about things so tell me how you guys at free range push your clients to take risks like that we say to our clients, if we're not making you feel uncomfortable within the first two weeks of working with us, we are not doing our jobs. We want to push them as far as possible, knowing that we suggest ideas that are out here. They'll probably land here, but at least that's further from where they started from. So that's always our goal, to get them to push the envelope a little bit. That's great. Um, and can you tell me um, why you think nonprofits are sometimes afraid of innovation? Like, you know, the making uncomfortable, then to maybe, from an inside view, I know when I was at the American Cancer Society, we actually had a Future and Innovation Center. Um, and it pushed the employees, like, come and apply, and we write about it a lot in the book, and it said, if you come up with a breakthrough idea to a product or a program or a service, we'll fund it. We'll help you fund it internally. We'll test it. We'll beta test it, and then we'll actually become a, maybe even a nationwide program for the American Cancer Society. But, I mean, we had the advantage of size, right? Um, so how do you think a lot of nonprofits get over that hump or figure that out, and, you know, what is the breakthrough moment? of that when they realize, yeah, we can do this too. I think a lot of nonprofits are, are, afraid of, are afraid of pissing off a donor, are afraid of, you know, losing any kind of support that they have. And innovation, you know, going one way, may, it's, it's kind of a scary. And it was what uh, Dan was talking about this morning in the plenary about the right to fail. And, you know, nonprofits and, and everybody needs to have that kind of safety net to fail. And I think that's where... The innovate, I love that idea that, that, that you guys were pushed to innovate and that you were funded to innovate, and I think the more nonprofits can do that, th that'll be great in the long run. Yeah. By the way, I'm going to make a shout out yeah. to Steve in Chicago and Clay in D.C. Thanks for watching. Tweet us. Tweet us. So tell me, what is the most innovative campaign in your mind that a client has done? I don't know, you don't want to make other clients mad, so you don't have to say who it is or what it is, but I mean, tell me a little bit about something super innovative that you guys pushed one of your clients to do. Well, th there's quite a few things that we've actually tried to push our clients to do, and, and one of the things is that I'm seeing out there is, is for one, is just trying to push storytelling as being like a big component for this. Is to like really tell a compelling story and create an end for your audience so that it empowers them to be the hero. No matter what, however you package that, whether it's a new app or whether it's a, you know, it's 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 a, it's a it's a thing that can sit on your desk or if it's just a PDF even, is just trying to co create that compelling story. And and I think like kind of like what you the question you were asking earlier is that I think that a lot of people are scared around this because they f feel like they underestimate their audience a lot of times and that they're afraid to actually push for new thinking and that you know it's it's okay to be a little bit more bold with your storytelling um, and so for the most part what we do is you know we do try to like do the Hail Mary ideas here's that like weird wild you know thing way out of the box but that we also try to have things that are grounded and it's it really important to really kind of understand our client as best as, as we can and say like look we, we eat sleep breathe your brand and therefore we have a sense of where we think you may, may need to go and we, we design based on that but I mean there's some really killer guys out there doing some amazing stuff and I could talk forever about that <laughs> but and yeah. I think, too, another innovative thing when you're thinking through your design is also taking chances and breaking away from the box that we put ourselves in for design for so long, like realizing that people can scroll when they go to a site so that people aren't afraid of that anymore, that people have bigger screens, that using HTML5, even though maybe not everyone in your audience can see it, is really great, especially reaching out to people that don't, can't use Flash because they're on their mobile device or tablet. And, it, and it's not that nonprofits can't be innovative. Like, I mean, if we think of all when we went back and social media was just starting, I mean, a lot of nonprofits were the ones that kind of took that first step and made kind of presence on Facebook or on MySpace, you know, just trying to take those steps because they could. And then, you know, the, so their organizations didn't have social media managers. They just kind of crept up. And then when it became important into the CEO's mind, then it was that person who already had it going. So, so let's go around the circle and give me a real-world example that the folks at home could go and see of somebody doing something really innovative. So I'll start with you. Oh, yeah. I, I like that a lot. Surprise questions. Um, 
I, I, I don't know if it's something that they can see, but it's something I'm, I'm free to share is that we're tying social media metrics into our overall communication and PR metrics that we report to our board. So media impressions includes, uh, includes social media impressions as well. And I think it's just that just ties it into, and one of our pillars of strategic plan is to mobilize the public. So that's what we're doing. Um, I'll, I'll pick one of them. Okay. Yep, yep. Um, I'll, I'm going to say slaver, uh, slaveryfootprint.org. I think it's just one of the most killer sites I've been to in a while. It's so simple. The coding isn't outrageous, but what it does is it, when the viewer comes and goes into the site, they actually feel like they are contributing to the story and actually controlling the story. As they scroll down, the hands move, and then it be also becomes sort of a game and becomes a very immersive experience. And you start to really evaluate like who I, like who I am and what I've been doing with my life, as opposed to just being pushed messaging saying like this is here's the bad news guys here's the bad news guys we've got to help this bad news and correct it but as instead creating an in for that the audience to kind of play and really kind of self-evaluate and see how they fit into that actual message and then ultimately I think it's kind of like a game model and it makes you want to play and makes you want to contribute in the end so slaveryfootprint.org I hats off to you yes and what I'll say is actually just a pitch to uh, we tweet at Free Range Studio, uh, just at with no S at the end, uh, and we post uh, as much innovative content as we can, not necessarily from us, but from sources we find all over the web. So we're always posting new things on there and on Facebook as well, and would love to help you guys or to have you guys help us with the conversation. So I think um, what we kind of want to wrap up and and talk about too on the innovation front is you know define it. Like you know we've been talking about it, we said we'd define it, but I really want like what is two sentences in your mind on what innovation is? So we'll start here. I think that innovation is something that goes outside of your normal purview, normal comfort zone, that moves the needle and creates success. I'm going to maybe kind of repeat myself a little bit here. It's, just, it's, it's, it's a device or it's a, it's a service that changes the way you think and then ultimately changes the way you behave. That's ultimately what innovation is supposed to do, I feel. You guys did a great job. <laughs> you took everything that I was going to say. Uh, yeah, I think I don't think I have anything else to add to that. So good job. That's good. Um, and I guess too, you know, in thinking about it, I think a lot of people are putting this overemphasis over like, oh, we're doing social media and that's innovative. And you know, I I think we would all agree that it's not. That's just another form of marketing communications. And maybe six years ago that was because it was different. You know, in the book we talk a lot about what is innovation. And you know, a lot of people overuse that word in our culture and our society, and they're like, the new, you know, Chevy Tahoe with extra cup holders, so innovative. And it's like, no, extra cup holders is not innovation in product. <laughs> um, you know, it didn't change a behavior. It didn't change a behavior. It just, it just, it was an extra thing. And I think that's that's where we we really get ourselves in a lot of trouble when we use the word innovation. Is because, you know, it's like, it's not just a thing. Create a way. Things don't make you special. Creating a new behavior does. And I think that's, that's, that's the challenge for us all. Perfect. Um, and so I will ask you guys one last question uh, about the keynote this morning. So napkin, what was on the napkin? Did you sketch it out? Did you tweet it? What's going on? I did tweet out my napkin. So you can go to at DP Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L, and you can see my napkin that shows the six steps of napkin drawing. Oh, all right. All right. And napkin question? I wasn't here. <laughs> all right, all right. Napkin would have been awesome, though. Napkin would have been awesome. Uh, and I just did doodles um, on mine mostly. But I did follow along. I like doing the arrows, things like that. Um, so anyway, we are going to turn it back over. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, we have everybody here. So say your Twitter handles one last time so the folks at home can say hello. Sure, at DP Michelle, and then also at Feeding America, all one word. Awesome. And we're at Free Range Studio, no S. Cool, and I'm at Dave I M, and our nonprofit is at NP Film, uh, and the website is thefutureofnonprofits.com. If you guys want to check out the book, thanks. Awesome, thank you guys so much. And I just wanted to say I took an image from the Free Range uh, site for the blog post about the live stream, and the the image says that great stories make great change possible, and I love that so much. I think that is so cool.